Hey guys, welcome back for another uh, ATC 250ES video. Um, maybe recently you've seen some of the upgrades I've done, like my oil cooler upgrade. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the 350X front end conversion. Uh, we're going to get right down to business here and I'll tell you about some stuff that's coming up. Uh, try to keep this short and sweet. Anyway, what are the reasons we go, I went with a 350X uh, front end? Well, uh, I'm subscribed to some gentlemen uh, who I saw with really long forks on the front end of their bikes. Uh, looks like maybe someplace in Florida or something. Anyway, they're riding in the swamp, uh, heavy marsh uh, stuff, two or three feet of water and just having a blast. Uh, ATC Mud videos, uh, one of my favorite videos to watch. I wish they'd post some more. Um, anyway, the problem I had was that my rear end, my rear tires uh, are 14 inch uh, wheels and I had those before I swapped out my front end. Well, I swapped out my front end because I was tired of constant brake problems. Uh, I was tired of a tough, hard suspension and um, I wanted a little more ground clearance. So the first thing it gets you is about 12 inches of clearance here. You can see from the bottom of that peg bracket, it's uh, right where it mounts on the, on the crash bar there or the heel guard, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you have 12 inches of full clearance. Um, I can go up another inch because of this front end here, so you can kind of see where that line is, about an inch. I could go up to 13 inches if I wanted to. Um, so, benefit was, is definitely a softer, better ride, uh, thinner, skinnier tire, which is better handling. Um, the front fender is actually an airfoil. Uh, which channels air onto the engine uh, unlike the factory OE uh, front fender which doesn't do anything and, uh, except keep lots of mud off of you but that's not a drive tire so it's not like we need uh, a huge amount of protection from that uh, anyway something I wasn't willing to give up was the front basket um, I wanted a place uh, I wanted the front rack um, you never know what can happen um, I have my little medical box with a watertight seal on it uh, in here because I end up going camping with kids and the wife and all that. And um, every one of them has something that they don't want to get wet that they want me to take care of. So I painted this old uh, French medical box and uh, put a uh, foam liner inside it. And it's seen some use. It's protected a lot of uh, things from getting ruined. Sets of keys being lost in the woods sort of thing so even though it doesn't necessarily look the most natural uh, as a setup on this front end uh, we're all used to seeing that little itty bitty dual headlight setup on on this set of forks um, I wanted to keep that part original and I still have the entire front end that goes on so anytime I decide I want to go back I can um, what else um, Let's talk about the hard part of this anyone can put this front end on and use the factory wheel and tire not me though because this is a 24 inch tall tire those are 26 inch tall tires it looks funny with a little tiny wheel on the front so this is a 27 inch tall tire with a brand of tire i've never heard of great big lugs it's a six ply tire uh really tough tire looks like it's gonna be great I'm, i haven't had it on an actual trail ride with the front end or with with this particular tire on the front yet i did with the old tire and i loved it i mean it's like like butter <laughs> Anyway, um, how did I make the wheel fit? Well, it's a ATC uh, 250SX uh, front axle, which is perfect the perfect width to go on your 350X front end. And then all you have to do is find a flange uh, that you space and weld on to the 250SX. You have to use a spacer, unfortunately. My welding friend, my buddy that has the TIG, um, said he didn't want a chance warping the tube and cutting off the uh, original backing to slide it over two inches for me. So um, I guess it was possible and some of you may be super fabricators, um, but in the interest of time um, and you know just the enjoyment of making this because I mean if there's no enjoyment in, in doing this or playing with these bikes or rebuilding them or whatever then what the heck are you doing it for? Um, I didn't want to kill myself or a buddy. I didn't want to spend thousands of dollars. I just wanted something that works. So I've maintained this easy to take off uh, dual piston caliper. Very easy. Two bolts. Boom, boom. I take it off. I put some pads on. It's like 10 bucks. 
um, much better than having to disassemble the whole entire front end of your bike, uh, which I was doing like once to twice a year because uh, I was having brake problems with my uh, old hub. Uh, in any event, once you get the once you get it mounted on here, you can sort of see the hub through the the slots the, that are cut in the disc. Uh, you just put some what is it a one inch bolt, one and a quarter inch stainless bolt with a, uh, a nylon uh, nut on it so it won't back off. A uh, piece of cake, it stops on a dime compared to the drum brakes. Um, the only other things I had to do was I, I installed new neck bearings or head bearings, depending on who you're talking to, is, is whether you hear head, head bearing or neck bearing. Um, so they sell those, All Ball sells a kit. It's compatible with multiple years and it's not very expensive. It's just two simple wheel bearing, tapered bearings um, that slide onto a tube. Very simple. Uh, this was a fun thing. They sell all kinds of garbage uh, to mount headlights and things on all manner of motorcycles. I just did a general search for, um, they, they call them fork ears, so or headlight fork ears. Um, and I found these big nylon bushing, um, either that or it's rubber, not sure, don't care, but it holds on to that 35 millimeter tube quite nicely. So when you search, you want to include in your search 35 millimeter fork tube uh, ear or fork ear, and uh, you'll find it. Anyway, the, um, I just slid this up till this hole through this bracket was in line with the hole on the, uh, the OEM hole where the rack originally mounts to an inner ear on your fork. So if you look at it, you'll see it. If you want to do this, just know. I, I did it this way. This one kind of holds the tension. This just is kind of the prop rod, and on the back side of this, there's a washer and a nylon nut, so it doesn't back off. Very simple. Did it on both sides. Here's my horn. Uh, did it on both sides. You can see this one needs to be adjusted a little. Evidently, it's turned in. But it's on here, I mean, it's on here good. It's not going anywhere. Uh, the other part of this was I had to have an angle bracket that extended off of the side of the fork there. I'll give you a little better view of it. But I just had those laying around. Um, they're not the prettiest in the world, but they're hardened steel and uh, they're not gonna bend. Um, if I hit anything really hard, then yeah, I'll probably break it. But how hard do you think it'll be for me to find another one of those or a pair of those? Not hard at all. It didn't cost me anything. So I don't intend to make any stupid decisions and break my bike. Um, in any event, um, that's how I managed to, to keep my rack and my box and my headlight set up. This headlight's awesome. Um, beyond that, beyond the great brakes and the greater ground clearance, um, I don't know what other reason you would need uh, to do this <laughs> Those are huge reasons for me that 27 inch tall tire is pretty mean. Let me show you the spacing on it Once I got the uh, once I got the axle figured out The width and what spacer I was going to use. Oh, let me talk about that This spacer you can hardly even see it now. I had to cut about three-quarters of an inch off of that spacer It's what they call the big spacer on the front of the 350X. So I, I had to cut that down to make it have contact with the bearing past that seal. On this side, I took off my, my speedometer drive because I'm going to go with a digital one. And this bearing is the same one you'll find on the front of your, your 350 or on the front of your ATC 250 ES now. That is just the regular old plain Jane factory uh, spacer. So, yeah, I'm going to be going with digital. Maybe I'll do a video on that when I do the digital uh, Speedo. Uh, I've got to figure out where I'm going to mount it. And uh, I'm going to take off this... Um, I'm going to take off this homemade bracket that I made out of an electrical box. Like It's, it's like a three-inch uh, fan electrical box for in the house. I had to cut it, cut a groove in it, bend it, paint it. And then I just adapted... I, I guess I just had like an, an old bracket laying around and I drilled some holes for it. It's what I used before I had the actual 250 ES, the vintage bracket. Um, it looks funny on this front end and it held the, the speedometer way over here um, and I had to make a bracket to hold the bracket so it didn't make any sense. <laughs> so anyway, it came off of there. Um, 
beyond that, man, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, so let's talk about for the future. Um, on the back back here, you'll see where I've taken off my drum and I'm in the process of I'm in the process of disassembling this. Um, I did a little bit of research and I found a, a, a left-handed master cylinder. Um, I don't care much for a foot brake. Um, I know it could come in handy, but there's really nowhere to mount it on the bike uh, without some, some pretty good fabrication. So if anybody knows of anything that they've used or seen used that's a simple bolt-on, by all means, please share. But at this point, I've purchased a, uh, a Chinese, like off of a Chinese quad. It's brand spanking new uh, rear caliper uh, with, with a lefty master cylinder. I haven't yet worked out the reverse lockout, but uh, I may just use a separate handle, you know, just like a little mini handle uh, so that I can pull that back when I want to go into reverse. I've seen other people do similar things on their bikes, so um, not a big deal. I'm sure I'll figure it out and I'll get it working and I'll, I'll share that with you guys. But uh, the big thing on this rear drum setup is that A, it's heavy, B, these brakes always stick. Um, I'm always reaching back and trying to pull that, that uh, brake lever back so that it isn't stuck in place. <coughs> um, I burn up the brakes real fast because of that. Um, the seals and everything on here have been replaced a couple times on this drum and it's always leaking water and gets full of mildew and sludge and the brake calipers or the brake shoes come apart. I'm just over it. So anyway, that's what's to come. Uh, if you like three wheelers and you like somebody who isn't, uh, ultra technical, but likes to work on all of his own stuff, I'm your guy. Um, subscribe me, like me. Uh, if you want to, uh, tell me, tell your friends to come check me out. Um, I'm just, I'm just doing this for fun. Um, anyway, hope you guys, uh, hope you guys have a good one and be safe.